Welcome back. Thanks for joining us on the Liam Tarrant for the Warriors Cup here with Elijah Clark. Elijah is a Penzo Gracie Muay Thai. He is fighting Paul Martin at 198 for the 198-pound uh, WBC North American Championship on 729 of Warriors Cup. We're going to talk to Elijah for a little bit and get some uh, info on him, his thoughts on the fight. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. No problem. My pleasure. All right. Um, every, you're a mainstay in New York. Yes. So much so they call you the mayor. <laughs> so, We've seen you in New York for a long time. For anybody out there who might not be familiar with your career, yeah. uh, how long were you in the amateurs here for? Uh, I started uh, at um, what it's no longer exists. It's no longer anymore. The Fight House. Mm -hmm. That's like the only old school guy from okay. New York. Right. The Fight House. I started in the Brandon, which was kind of like Evolution Muay Thai. Right. Started there. I was one of his second fighters mm -hmm. to ever fought. Um, been doing it for a while. <laughs> yeah. 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 What was your final amateur record? Uh, you know? twenty-four and four. Wow. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> and then, how long ago did you turn pro? Uh, turned pro about, you say, five years. Okay. Um, including the pandemic. So you had that like year and a half, two year block where yeah. nothing was, yeah, was happening. Were you maintaining during the pandemic and doing the uh, yeah, we training? Yeah, we still train. Obviously, one training is hard, but still kind of like still coming in and training with uh, uh, more playful. <laughs> right, sure. Yeah. How, and what's your pro record now? Eight and two. Eight and two, yeah. okay. My only two losses to Brett Halabachak. <laughs> yeah, Brett's, Brett's a tough dude, man. <laughs> yeah. And Brett X Threat is behind the camera. <laughs> Talking smack on him right in front of him. <laughs> so, Can't talk smack about him because I lost him. <laughs> ah, valid, valid point, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, everybody in the New York scene seems to know each other, and yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess that's how scenes go. Like, you, yeah, you, you're around the same folks. And now, when you fought Brett, you were at uh, 168, 175, yes, correct? in those yes. two divisions. Yeah. Okay. And now this fight's at 198. Yeah. So you're stepping up. Is this the first time you've gone in a division that high? That yeah, heavy? the first time. Uh, after my last fight against Justin Moss, I just told Joe I feel like I want to fight a big guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just felt like this. A different, put a different challenge to it. Right. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let me fight. I want to fight a big guy. And it's not like you took a warm up fight into it. You're fighting the WBC North American champion. Yeah. And you're stepping right up in, in waiting. He's a very tough guy who we saw at Warriors Cup yeah, a up? few months back. Yeah. Uh, being that you're stepping up in weight, your first time taking him on, <laughs> do you get any like back pain from dragging around that tremendously large set of balls? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I mean, it's, it's a major challenge to take yeah. on, and especially for the WBC being in the scene now. Yeah. Uh, you having been in this for so long, now seeing an organization like WBC come in, I mean, has that it expands opportunities, but it's also pretty big for the American scene. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's really good for the American scene, and it kind of gets fighters kind of step up, especially now with the ranking system they have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good thing. So um, I think I fought I fought back for the WBC a couple of years ago. I think I fought Brett for the WBC title, I think that was 168, mm -hmm. we fought, fought that. But you weren't seeing so many American, like, U.S. promotions or New York promotions. With the, um, I think we had to, like, live through the struggle. Mm -hmm. It was hard for us to get that WBC title fight right. in New York. Um, but now, with Warriors Cup being able to do that, I think it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of fighters. Yeah, um, it seems like back in the day there were promotions and promotions might have a belt and it was like not or, or there was like sanctioning bodies they had yeah. a belt, but nothing as big and as international no, as no. WBC. I think for, for Brett and I when we fought for the WBC, when I fought for, when I fought Brett for the WBC title, um, that was kind of like it was hard to get the promotion to get that mm -hmm. fight right. sanctioned. Right. And, but now with um, Chris Train and those guys being able to have shows with WBC title fights, I think it, it's great. It opens a lot of doors. And also with the amateur rankings and stuff like that, it, yeah. it's a great opportunity for a lot of fighters. That's, yeah, for more recognition. Absolutely. Fights. There's going to be a, uh, an amateur ranking fight. Franz Paris fighting uh, Dane Turney yeah. uh, from out California. Um, that's pretty crazy, too, for the, for the entire U.S. scene to actually have a, a legitimized ranking system. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, when I, when I was doing it, there wasn't anything like that for right. amateur fighters. Yeah. So I think it's a great exposure for those guys, especially the new generation of guys coming up. It's a great exposure to lead them into the pros. 
control fun division. Sure, it seems like there's so many opportunities now with one championship coming yeah. up and, and world world WBC titles and things of that nature. Um, you mentioned that since you're coming up in, in uh, you wanted a new challenge, that's yeah. why you stepped up in weight divisions yeah. here. I'm curious for just to get in your head in a way, when you were coming towards a fight, and I'm not asking about this fight in particular, but as you've evolved in the game, how is your how do you strategize things? Like you've got the team here at Henzo Gracie with Joe Sanferi as a coach and a ton of guys, Mike McKee and a whole great staff here. And you with the amount of experience you have, and you're looking at a fighter, how do you strategize things in your head? What are you looking for? What are you looking at? Um I tend to look at um the fighters' main focus, what they're good at, what they're, what they're bad at. But I try to focus myself on what I could do. Okay. Um, it's more about imposing your will. And But if you try to get into what the fighter, oh, he does this, oh, he does that, he does this, it's like you get into your head so much. I try to kind of eliminate that and be like, okay, this is what I could do. Let me go and do it. Right. And with uh, with guys like Mark Marrero, um, uh, Mateo, Joe Sumperi, all those guys, Mike McKee, PJ, with all the guys I have here, with Elvis, I think Joe puts such a great plan, game plan together. Mm -hmm. It's about following and executing. Okay. You know what I mean? And for me, and with all the other fighters, it's about putting complete trust in that game plan. Mm -hmm. And be like, hey, this is the game plan he has for us. We are, going, we are going for it. We have plan A, we have plan B, we have plan C. And it's, forget my, put my ego aside and completely believe in that game plan. Right. And just go for it. Having the faith in the, the strength of the team yeah, coming exactly. in down the ring. Because yeah. it's a team sport at the end of the day. I mean, that's, you're, you're that's in the there thing alone, people, but that's the thing people don't realize. People, people's, when people see you fight, they say you want another man, but they don't realize the team effort it takes weeks and months before mm -hmm. that to kind of get in there. And obviously, if you don't have a good, solid team behind you, you have no training partners. Right. Basically. And for me, I don't believe in having you need the top level fighters to train with, right. but you need a core group of guys that are really skilled and dedicated to the sport and dedicated to you the same way you dedicated to yourself to them. And I think with Joe, Mike, um, Mike McKee, Mark Marrero, all those guys, they know who I am as a fighter. Right. And at no point are they gonna put a game plan for me that's gonna lead me to failure. So right. I gotta have complete trust in that. Like, hey, whatever they tell me to do, right. forget what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Follow. Okay. And you, you mentioned that they know you as a fighter, and uh, I like uh, Muhammad Ali had this quote. He said, "You know, a man who sees the world the same at 50 as he did at 20 is wasting 30 years of his life." So you, your perspective changes as you go on. I feel like. Yeah. But you said they know you as a fighter, not just the physical attributes, but mentally. I mean, yeah. they know how to motivate you and. In the ring and in, in training, and yeah. they know what makes a tick time. Yeah, most definitely. And I think that's that's the key thing about a coach. You know, I mean, a coach has to know you inside and out. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean? with Joe, Joe doesn't care about your feelings. With me, I'm the type of person who's like, I don't take anything personal. Right. You know, I never take from day one training with Joe. I've never taken anything personal. I know everything he do, whether he scream at me, beats the shit out of me. Right. It's to forward my progression. Okay. So that when I walk out these doors. It's like, okay, think about it, get it done tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But don't dwell on it. And okay. that's one, I think that's one of, the, one of the key things about fighting is you have to be able to take criticism right. and absorb it, understand, fix things, and move on. But if you dwell on it, you keep constantly holding yourself back. It's constantly being in the back of your head thinking, oh man, I gotta do this. It's like, no, let's go, do it. Right. You know what I mean? Follow the game plan and just do it. Have you. Taking that outside the gym, have you seen it impact your life and, and your approach? To oh, most definitely. Like most definitely. Um, growing up, I was never a kid that got into uh, any kind of violent thing when I was in the gym growing up. But with with Muay Thai, it got me to a point where I could just kind of like, you get into altercations with people on the street and like, yeah, man, whatever, man. Yeah. Nice, uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> just keep like, it moving. Just, just brush it off and keep it moving. Man. Yeah. Yeah, you just realize it's not worth it. Right. Especially today, but. I grew up in Ben Stuy, and it's like I grew up in Ben Stuy in the nineties, but it was, it was it was rough. Yeah. You know what I mean? But with Muay Thai, it gave you an avenue where you're just like, okay, I don't have to prove anything to anyone on the street. It's not worth it. The yeah. people that care about me and know about me, know what I'm about. I don't have to prove right. anything to anyone. Else. They can essentially kill your ego after. Yeah. Which is because the thing about fighting is, there's always someone that can beat. Right. There's always someone that can beat. 
you're never the top dog. There's always someone that can beat you. So you realize, like, what do I have to prove to someone this year? Yeah, what are you going to win for? Like, yeah. Four. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting mentality because it's definitely being around the fight scene. Some of the most relaxed and chill people I know are all fighters. Like, yeah. There's the outside thing, oh, there must be a fighter, there must be crazy. It's like, no, nah, they're actually pretty laid back about yeah. things. Like, all their stress is taken out and, and they're going after. I mean, I've, after what you guys are so, uh, our training, it's like, when you're done with that, you got no energy to, to yeah. go to the street. And to yeah, I just want to eat and go home and go to sleep. Yeah, I just like, want to relax. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just that's when you go home and spend time with kids. Yeah. Do you find it tough? And kids, you've got a daughter. Yeah, yeah i got two daughters. Two daughters, yeah. okay. Do you find it tough, um, you were talking about that, ha approach it to the outside, uh, explaining, I mean, you've got years of experience at this point. Like, when you're at Thanksgiving dinner with your family, explaining, like, the motivation. Because like, people must say to you, like, this is right. What are you doing? Like, but, I mean, and they love you and support you, but yeah. even, like, friends or other people, like, explaining the, your motivation to keep going and keep excelling in this field? I mean, my friends, uh, I knew from when I was a kid from back home in the Caribbean, you know, they knew me as a timid guy, so a lot of people would be surprised when I got into the sport, especially uh, growing up playing basketball, when everyone played basketball, I would always get hurt doing something, and then when I moved, into, when I started doing this sport, my mom goes, every time you play basketball, you get hurt, and now you go into a sport where someone's actually trying to hurt you, it's like, what the hell? They don't understand it, because it's like, there's a certain love for this sport, and because for me, I've been doing this for so long, but I'm constantly growing. I'm always growing. I'm always learning. There's never, there's never a pinnacle. Okay. So it's like a lot of things you do. It's like you reach the top. Like, oh yeah, I'm great. Okay, that's it. Where now? What it's now? Right. I find with this sport, there's never a point where you're like, oh, I'm there, and no one's gonna knock me off. Of right. It's like. Have the rest of my laurels. I'm good now. No, yeah. there's constant growth. There's constant growth. But that being said, you have to be open-minded to that growth. You can't say, hey, oh, I'm top dog. Let me play my A game all the time. And anyone that comes to the gym, I play my A game and I can beat right. them. No, sometimes let your A game will put, put it to the side and play a B game and kind of see how you grow. And especially with the group of guys we have here, you have the young guys that are coming and hungry for it. You know what I mean? And they yeah, so like a daddy upstairs. Yeah. You work it. Like, yeah, I mean, go for it. That kid, whenever I spot that kid, he comes at me. And you look at Kendu Irvin, like, whenever I spot yeah. Kendu, Kendu is trying to kill me. Right. And one of the guys was like, yo, Kendu was like, he's trying to kill you. And he's like, yeah, I'm not trying to kill you. He goes, no, I'm trying to kill him. You know what I mean? And so I have to stay alert with those guys. Right. So it keeps me on my toes, especially with the younger guys. I can't, I'm not fast enough, I'm getting older, I'm not fast enough. Mm -hmm. They're learning at such a faster pace than I did with the technology now, the information we have now. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I have to constantly grow. I got to think, okay, I can't just rely on my athletics. Right. You know what I mean? You gotta keep your mind open to learning new things. It's interesting, you mentioned the technology there and the game progressing a little faster. It's like, I think there might be multiple factors. Experienced fighters going into coaching, yeah. like all the experience you have, you're now bringing back to the gym and putting in. And then, yeah, you're right for the technology because you, you don't have to wait on a VHS tape. You no. can you go on YouTube and yeah. see the ties or see the style or see all of it. It's all right at your fingertips. That was never around. That was never around. And one of the things I tell some of the guys, the younger guys coming up, it's like when when I first started, you couldn't just know you find so and so and go, oh, there he is. Right, it's right. Like, no, there wasn't no Instagram where you could just look up the guy right away, you have to like really research, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and now you can just put a search on Instagram, put a search on YouTube, and there you go, there's the guy right. fighting. But also, like you said, it's the, you have the fighters are now transitioning to training, mm -hmm. so it's like all the experience we have, we're not bringing it back to the young guys. So all the mistakes we made, they are not making those mistakes. You know right. I mean? So I think that's the thing too, it's like us as older fighters, we have to give back and be like, hey, this is the mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be making those mistakes. So it, it speeds up right. the process. And now the younger fighters, the WBC ranking system, yeah. they can actually get an idea of where they are in the country. Or, yeah. I believe they're, they're going to be in regions, northeast, southeast, uh, southwest, yeah. northwest. Um, and then having them come together, it seems like more of a roadmap. Now. Yeah, it's more of a roadmap. Before yeah. it was just all over the place. Yeah, it was like, can you get a fight? Good, sign it. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's go. It was like all over the place. But now it is actually, you, could go, you, could, you have a... Um, data of like, okay, this is where the guys are. Those right. are the top guys in this position. And when now, when you're like, okay, this top guy is fighting this top guy, 
It's not like this top guy, this this guy, we know he's a top guy, but then he's fighting Joe Blow. It's like, okay, why is he fighting this guy? Yeah, we're getting in whoever. For the, yeah, it yeah. makes no sense. And I know Warriors Cup's always been big on matchups, and it wasn't a great matchmaking team. Yeah. Uh, putting together really competitive fights, and that's always been something yeah, to see. I mean, the last couple of shows ever since the pandemic, uh, when they started back up, every every show they put, it's just a phenomenal show. Yeah, like start to finish. Start to finish. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Caribbean from St. Lucia originally. Yes. Yeah, and what, how old were you when you moved to Bedside? I had moved up here when I was uh, 14, going on 15. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was been an interesting transition. Yeah, going into Boys and Girls High School, when the whole blood gang things came into New York, so uh -huh. I kind of experienced that whole, had that whole experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, looking to the future, are you... Obviously, nobody wants to look past the fight. You don't look yeah. past the fighter like, okay, after this, I'm going to do that and that. Do you have ambitions on where you want to go after this? or? or I what? mean, I like to take one fight at a time. After okay. this fight's done, then we'll see where we want to go, mm -hmm. what trajectory we want to go. Um, I never like to plan too far ahead. Right. You know what I mean? Because then all of a sudden, something happened. You're like, oh, shit, well, I have this, this, and this plan. It's like, right. well, after this fight, let's see where we're going to go after that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, and 729 Warriors Cup North American Cruiserweight Championship. If I Paul Martin for the title, um, that well, I'm looking forward to it. Best of luck, and thank you for taking the time with us. Is there any uh, you have any sponsors that be like the plug in the meantime? No, I don't really push for sponsors. <laughs> My main sponsor is Hensley Gracie Academy. Okay, that's it. Well, great, but, flying the Hensley Gracie Banner. That's, that's what it is. Gotta fly the flag. <laughs> uh, you can follow Warriors Cup at Warriors Cup underscore three PP. Follow uh, Muay Thai Graham at Muay Thai Graham. You can follow me at Liam Talks Fights. And you can follow Hensley Gracie at RGMT NYC. So, folks, we'll see you on the 29th. And uh, you can join us either live in person at the Melrose Ballroom. How cool is that venue, by the way? The Melrose oh, yeah. Ballroom. With the balcony overhead and the two screen in back. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> um, that's about it, folks. So, thanks for joining us. And we hope to see you on the 29th, either live or on BXNG TV. You can hear myself and Brett and Molly call the action as we go. And uh, Elijah, best of luck, and thanks for uh, joining today. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.